Welcome in, listener. You're listening to a segment from the Slump Buster podcast with Juju and Dre. Find the full episode on Spotify, iTunes, the Google Play Store, or our YouTube channel. Enjoy. To follow up on a story that we talked about on this show a couple weeks ago, so it's official now. Governor Gavin Newsom officially signed the Fair Pay for Play Act into California legislature. So he signed it on Monday, September 30th. The bill won't take effect officially until 2023. The NCAA, they've definitely been trying to fight this as much as they could. They've levied threats against the state of California saying that we'll put a bull ban on your teams for the foreseeable future if you pass this into legislature. Well, it's official now, so there's no going back. So it's going to be interesting to see what the recourse is from the rest of the nation, from the NCAA, how players are gonna react when it comes to recruiting, taking into account these financial ramifications of where they decide to play their college ball, whether that be at USC or a Southern University. Andre, what do you think of this officially getting signed into action? I think it's awesome. Like we talked about the other week is college sports is super profitable. There's tons of money that's just flying around. In fact, with $84 million, right, you probably couldn't even buy some of the stadiums that these teams are playing in or some of the locker rooms are, are worth more than the $84 million going back to the Kirk Cousins thing. And so the fact that pools can, can profit off of these kids and using the image of these kids and their likeness and not really give that much back outside of like a little bit of a scholarship. And, and there are, again, the occasional full ride scholar, scholarships that, that cover all of the expenses for the kids, but that's few and far between, right? And so the fact that these guys can now start bringing in sponsorships, right? And start making money off of, off of their own name, their own image. I think it's fantastic. I think it's what college sports sort of needs, especially because most of these kids aren't going to make it to the pros. A lot of these guys are not going to be able to play at the highest level. So they might as well be able to make money off of their bodies and off of what they're doing while they're still playing at the highest level that they'll be able to achieve. It's interesting. So the NCAA president actually had a little bit of a response here. Mark Emmer, in his interview, he said, this is a new form of professionalism and a different way of converting students into employees. They may be paid in a fashion different than a paycheck, but that doesn't make them not paid. What he's referencing in there is that athletes are really only going to be making money off endorsements. Again, it's worth noting that the schools themselves are not paying these athletes. The NCAA is not cutting checks to these players to go out there and perform. It's your Adidas. It's your Nikes. It's your local car dealership. These are the people that will be paying these players. So they're going to want to obviously put the most brandable faces on whatever it may be there advertisements, their pamphlet, and most of the time that's going to be quarterback and offensive players. But we'll see a little bit of trickle-down effect from even the middle-range guys if they're a good enough athlete and have the potential to go pro. What I'm mostly interested to see about this moving forward is the recruiting aspect. I don't know if it's going to mean that the California players or the California teams are going to be so much better in four years than the rest of the country because SC, they're a sleeping giant out there in Southern California. They've been down for the last few years, ever since the Pete Carroll scandal, Pete Carroll dipped on them, that this is the kind of edge that their school could use, even a UCLA could use, Cal, Stanford. These are all good teams or have been successful in college football and other college sports in the past. So if you give them an edge in recruiting to say, hey, come out here, you can make a paycheck while you're in college before you go pro, or you could go play for Clemson or play for Alabama or play for whatever have you. They're going to have that slight edge to say, come our way. I did kind of find it funny to factor in stuff. Now that it is out in the open, these players unfortunately will be taxed on their (laughs) income, whereas they weren't in the past getting taxed on under-the-counter deals in the past. So it's going to be interesting to see that kind of fact come into play. But obviously, if you're a shadier Southern school, you're not going to have the opportunity to really put that out there in your recruiting pitch. I am interested to see what it does with recruiting. The other thing that you sort of talked about, right, is the, the way that the college athletes are going to get paid and the way that they're going to make their money is it's going to be from whoever it is that's sponsoring them, right? So it's going to be your Nikes or Adidas. Or it could be a food brand, right? So if they're, or a vitamin brand or something like that. But what is interesting in the law is that you cannot conflict with your school or at least, right? Like, so if your school is a Nike school, you can't wear Adidas. That doesn't mean that you can't be sponsored by Adidas. It just means that you can't wear Adidas clothing and stuff like that while you're playing, right? And so I wonder if 
maybe kids will also possibly choose their schools based off the sponsorship that they want and who's reached out to them, right? Because if I'm Adidas, I'm not going to offer a kid however much thousand dollars I would offer him if he's playing at a Nike school. But if I said, hey, let, let's just say, you know, UCLA, I don't know what they're sponsored by, right? And all their sponsors. But if UCLA is an Adidas school, then I would say, hey, I will only pay you this much if you go to UCLA where you can actually wear my clothes when you're doing what it is that you do best. Do you think that's going to have much of an impact or not really? That's actually an interesting take. So these big corporations will have their say in where these kids go to school. It's no secret when it comes to advanced scouting these days that we know who the top prospects are. Most of these guys are coming out into the NBA drafts or NBA lotteries have been followed around by scouts since they were in middle school. These big corporations could go up to a 15-year-old and say, hey, you're going to be in college here in a couple of years. And we just thought we'd start reaching out to you because according to all these scouts we're talking to, you're more than likely going to go pro. So where you've kind of looked into the colleges, oh, I've kind of like took a gander at like Oklahoma or Texas. Well, hey, if you go to SC, we have this 10-year deal lined up for you already, a couple hundred million. And I think that this will be a good offer for you sign moving forward. So I think you should go to UCLA. If you're a 15-year-old kid and someone's throwing out those type of dollars at you, it's already set in stone where you're going to school. Oh, yeah, absolutely, right? And even, even if you're not 15, even if you're 17, right? Like, I couldn't imagine being a 17-year-old doing the sport that I, you know, love to do and having a company come up to me and tell me, hey, we got a million dollars for you right now. Even if it wasn't a million dollars, even, hey, we got $50,000 for you right now. That's more money than any 17-year-old has has probably like most 17 year olds, I should say, will see in their actual bank accounts. And so if you're Nike, right, you can easily get some of your top recruits that you want to go to the schools that that are Nike schools by just waving a little bit of money in front of them and saying, hey, I want you going to UCLA or USC or whoever it is that that is your school. When it comes to the national response to this, will more states start taking this upon themselves? It's worth noting that former Ohio State wide receiver and now Congressman Anthony Gonzalez, he's working on a national law when it comes to endorsements and college athletes. So if that takes effect, that is going to just make people think, why do we even need the NCAA? Which for all intents and purposes, maybe the NCAA is a little outdated at this point. I still think that most sports need a governing body. And I do think that that's where the NCAA is going to have a role, regardless of what legislature passes, how much players are getting paid. But I do think that Urban Meyer had a good take on Colin Cowherd's show this week. Some of the quotes he put out there, the whole reason he got into college athletics is because the ability to mold an 18-year-old kid. And if you're having a kid get paid $600,000 in college, like a Zeke Elliott, how do you convince him to go to class? That's going to be an interesting dynamic to follow and how it changes not only college athletics, but just in terms of the mentorship roles of coaching and teachers and professors of college athletes moving forward. Yeah, no, I think that that is an interesting question, right? Is it's hard to stay motivated. And I feel like the younger you are, the more short-sighted you are, right? Like when you're five years old, you don't care about what's going to happen when you're seven years old, right? And, and you get a little bit better at it as you continue to grow and you continue to age. So, but still, when you're 18 years old, you don't really care about what's going to happen to you when you're 25 years old because it's right in front of your face. And so if you've got $600,000, sort of like what we're talking about, right? Do you really care about hey, I still need to work my hardest and I still need to outperform everybody. I still need to keep my grades up so that I have next year as well. And I think that is a valid concern, right? Is if guys are making that much money, one, do they really have the vested interest to continue to really go to school and keep up with their schoolwork? But two, do they even have the vested interest to continue to do what it takes to get to the league and continue to perform at a super high level? Which I would argue there's a little bit, right? Like you don't get paid as well if you don't perform. But at the same time, you might see them start to slack off a little bit because they know, hey, I already got some money in the bank. Yeah. So he threw out the number 600K, but let's say a more modest number is thrown out there for a newer recruit or someone they're really high on coming into their program. What if that player gets that money and then doesn't take their grade seriously or decides not to show it a class? That's a little bit scary because what happens if that player also 
tears their ACL and to this point they've only made 50k that's done then their education is also maligned they've sacrificed their schooling and the hopes of making it a pro or the hopes of continued endorsements for the sake of the money they got now not the money they were hoping to get in the future yeah no I, th- I think it's a very very real concern um especially I think the thing with Urban Meyer, I I do also think that he wants to have some impact and it's easier to have an impact on those kids that, you know, are struggling and you're, you're helping them out. I do think that there's going to be a lot of different dynamics that happen, especially if it's legalized all around the, the United States. And even, right, we were talking about the companies having influence on where you on where you play. So now, right, like might the dynamics change on the companies now have a little bit of a say in who the coach is going to be, right? And which players are going to go where. And so it's almost like you would have Nike and and Adidas and, you know, some of these other big brands running the schools saying basically like, hey, here's who you guys need to put in and here's the kids that we'll bring to you, as well as now you have kids that are a little bit less motivated. And this goes back to Tim Tebow's concerns, right, is that they're no longer playing for the passion of the sport and the pride of the university. They're now playing a little bit to get a paycheck which they might not be as motivated anymore. Yeah. And again, in thinking short-sightedness, we talk about when these companies are going to be throwing out big money at some of these players. Some of these players, and we talked about this in the past, don't necessarily come from the best backgrounds. You see, again, someone just wave a fat wad of cash in your face. You're just going to take it. You're not going to be thinking about the long-term future. It's, it's money right there. It's money right now. You need money right now. Yeah, it's hard to really think about what you're going to be seeing in 2024 or so. I can't even think about 2020. Granted, really, I don't have 2020 vision. Yeah. Now, what I will say, (laughs) what I will say, though, to to counter Urban Meyer's point is that quote is easy to say when you're making millions of dollars, though, right? Urban Meyer is, is probably one of the highest paid NCAA coaches, at least for football in the country. And he might even be one of the highest paid government employees in his state. Or was. I mean, he's no longer the coach there. Yeah, was, right? And so with him, I think it's very easy to say that, hey, you know, it's going to change these dynamics and these kids shouldn't get paid. But what if Urban Meyer was only making $30,000 or $20,000, right? Might he have a change of heart? And especially if they said, hey, we're going to start paying these college coaches as well, right? If you bring in more talent, we'll also give you some kickbacks or something. I think he might sing a different tune. I don't know Urban Meyer personally, right? And I'm not trying to like damage his credibility or anything like that. I just think it's always easier to say that when you're set and living pretty, and then you have these kids that are struggling. Like you said, they come from broken families or broken homes, or they never had a whole lot of money growing up. And so while they're struggling, you get to sit in your big old six bedroom house, right? That costs a million dollars and you get to say, well, I'm helping today's youth. Again, not throwing Urban Meyer under the bus or or saying, you know, he's not sincere. I'm just saying that it's easier to say that when you're already set and these kids are not. I think that's a good kind of closing point on this topic. It's still ever developing story as we got three more years before this law really takes into effect. I look forward to talking about this subject in three years and seeing what kind of net outcome came from it. Christian, do you have anything before we move on? I could also see the schools also not wanting like more more corporate influence into their decision because I I could see that you're going to have this one kid that a recruiter is going to come in with somebody from Nike and another recruiter is going to come in with somebody from Adidas and they're going to be sh- they're going to be shouting out all these numbers to them. I can definitely see like a big old corporate type meeting that no that none of the schools want to go through because they don't they kind of don't want the corporate say because they already have enough corporate. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. like they, already, they already have enough sponsorships already. So I don't know. I, I, I could definitely see the schools also being annoyed by it too. Cause like they don't want more corporate people going in there and saying like, Hey, we're going to give this kid 60 K for the semester just because we're Nike, or we're going to give this kid 70 K this semester just because we're under armor. Well, some people will say that a lot of schools are corporations themselves when it comes to branding and marketing. It's going to be interesting to see that little duality of Nike versus, let's say, the powerhouse that is Alabama University. 